Before you begin creating your CSV, it is really important to have a strong understanding of what each column in the file means and what you will have to put in every column as you add your products to your store. We're gonna take you through what every column in your CSV does mean. To start off, let's export your current CSV from Vend. That way, you'll have a template to work with. The first column is the ID. The ID is the fingerprint for a product in Vend, and it lets it know that you can edit this product in CSV and not get a duplicate later on. When you are uploading products for the first time, you can leave the ID column blank, as Vend will create this for you. When you are editing current products, ensure that this column remains unchanged. The second column is the handle, and this is a mandatory field. The handle is what the family of the product is called in Vend. If you have an item like a pair of gloves that comes in multiple variants, like sizes or colors, they should all share the exact same handle. This way you can assign them variants and Vend will understand that they are all the same product in different variants. If all of these variants have different handles, Vend would not be able to understand that they are ultimately the same product. Next up is the SKU field. Now the SKU field is mandatory for products. SKUs should be alphanumeric and not include any special characters or spaces. Ensure that you are not creating duplicate SKUs in both CSV files when you're adding products to the dashboard. And remember if you are using Excel, that you are changing the column to text to avoid the SKUs truncating. The next field is the name, and this is also a mandatory field in your product CSV. This is what your product is called. If an item has variants, you will likely call all of the products by the same name. If you plan on printing labels in Vend, make sure the label name is not longer than 30 characters. Next up is the description. The description is really important to fill in. It allows you to reference what the details of your products are. If you are syncing Vend with e-commerce, customers may be searching for terms that are in your descriptions, allowing products a higher likelihood of being discovered. Type is the category that your items fit into. You should have a strategy of how you would like to set up your product types and tags, especially if you're selling online. So keep these at the top of your mind and organized when entering these into your CSV. Proper variant setup is vital. This will ensure that you share the same handle and you've got your different options for your products. You can set up your variants with the option name and then the value. This is possible for up to three different attributes. So for example, you could have a t-shirt that comes in size, color, and maybe a gender option as well. Product names cannot differ between variants as well as variant names and values. Tags are another field that you can search products by. So a great example would be to add tags related to the materials or fabrics used, um, anything that you can drill down to from the category or product type. Building multiple tags in a CSV is supported. Always make sure you separate it with a semicolon. It is truly essential that you enter in the supply price the first time you import products into Vend. It can be tricky to change this after and ensure that it's accurate. At the very least, you should estimate your supply price and include it in here. The retail price is another mandatory field. This is where you put the price of your items. If you have an overall markup for your items in store, and you've already entered the supply price, you can calculate the retail price by doing a calculation in Excel. We'll cover calculations in a little bit more detail later on in this course. If you plan on having custom loyalty balances for certain products, make sure you add it in the column next to it. If your spreadsheet doesn't show a loyalty column, 
make sure you turn loyalty on in your store and then re-export your CSV. It's always best to make sure that loyalty is turned on before you import. The outlet tax is a mandatory field for any tax exclusive stores. This is where you'll put your tax types uh, for your different retail stores in Vend. If you have multiple outlets, for example, uh, in locations with different tax brackets, you can assign each outlet a separate tax amount. You'll need to have your tax types set up in Vend beforehand. In a tax inclusive setup, the outlet tax fields will not appear. Instead, you'll see the tax name and tax value fields. These should match your account-wide tax settings in Vend. If you're using any accounting software like Xero, you will add the account code for this specified product here. Adding the account code will override any default sales mapping that you have set up for your entire account. If you don't need to change the mapping for a specific product, you can leave this field blank. The name of your supplier can be included as well. If the supplier does not exist in your store, this will create them in Vend after the import completes. If your supplier has a certain code for this product that they would like to receive upon ordering, and it's different to your SKUs, make sure you add it in here. If you are uploading an active product, meaning that you are going to be selling it, you must ensure there is a one in this column. If you want to upload the product, but you don't want it to be actively sold upon uh, the initial upload, put a zero in there. This field is binary, which means one is yes and zero is no. The same rules apply for the track inventory column. If this is a physical item and you plan on tracking the amount of stock that you sell, put a number one in this column. If the amount of this item in stock is negligible, put a zero. Next up is your inventory column. It's best practice to leave this at zero when you're initially importing your first set of products. Your initial inventory levels when you're setting up your vent store should be added through a stock order or an inventory count so it can attach a supply price. Users should always try and assign a supply price in this CSV though before adding the initial inventory fields. When your products reach the reorder point, they will show up in your low stock report as a product that has low stock. For example, when a pair of shoes hits two, you would like them to show up in your low stock report. So that means you should put a two in this column associated with the shoes product. Now when you do create an order and an item has hit its low stock amount, the restock level field allows you to set the amount that needs to be filled in automatically. So if we would like 30 to be replenished in stock, you can add it to the restock level column. So that covers the major fields of our product CSV. To wrap up, these are the columns that are mandatory. First we have the SKU, then the handle, the name, the retail price, any tax related columns, and whether the product is active. It's also advised that you should still fill in the supply price and also the track inventory column. That's either a one or a zero. It's always best to avoid these next things. Having commas anywhere in your spreadsheet, entering a product without a supply price, putting dollar signs in the price column, and it's always best to remove the inventory column. Only if you are editing products for a store that is live and trading. That way, you won't upload any incorrect or outdated inventory numbers. If you fall inside all of the rules we've just covered, you should be able to upload your CSV without issues.